These are every mental battles that I struggled with as an overachiever and why you can avoid this so that you can finally get out of your rut. Let's get started. Battle number one, having unrealistic expectations of myself. Now this is something that is so obvious to overcome, but the process for high achievers like us is not simple. Now I actually had to go back and ask myself, where did this belief of I am not enough until I do enough originate from? And that came from the fact that I was always pressured to be the perfect Thai daughter. And even though you can say almost every Asian children are pressured, but now I try to find the positive thing that came out of being pressured. And that was actually having very high standards for myself. But this all comes down to how you reframe your situation. There were times where I got really pissed off at how I was raised. And I would constantly blame everything around me that I was so pressured to be this perfect mold, but my environment was not set up for success. Compared to somebody who went to selective schools, who had parents that allowed them to explore their individuality, compared to students whose normal lifestyle was to hang out at Sydney CBD, while our normal lifestyle is just to hang out in the suburbs, we were not competing from the same standpoint. So once I finished high school and actually got myself into the competitive university, everything just felt really unfair from my end. And being able to transform your resentment into gratitude in this stage is really, really important. These days, I honestly don't have the emotional capacity to feel victimized because if I feel bitter, I won't be able to film a good video for you guys. And I really want to make great videos, which means that I have to keep my standards by choosing to be grateful towards the pressure from my past. Once I was able to identify that I had all these trauma related to having to achieve certain goals to be loved and accepted, I then came to make peace with the fact that it was actually a great thing for me to learn how to deal with this pressure. This whole unrealistic expectation of myself slowly starts to be more balanced out. Every time I catch myself these days asking me, why haven't I blown up on YouTube yet? I would then come back and reframe the situation and say, if you were not traumatized anymore, you would be patient on this journey. You would be focused on being the most gorgeous and empowered version of you. And you're not going to be dependent on any other results to define your self-worth. So the next time you're always finding yourself setting unrealistic expectations, I want you to actually come back and forgive all the past resentment, the fear, the hurt, and the pain that you've been through from not being able to be the person that you've always wanted to be. Battle two, having no compassion towards myself. Now linking back to the first point in that I was so pressured to be the perfect Thai daughter when my whole environment didn't support me to be that person. I would have no compassion for myself every single time that I failed. And the worst thing was that I actually never had physical evidences of me being able to thrive and really achieve what I wanted until I was in my late 20s. As a teenager, my puberty got the best of me and I never became that radiant, glowing version of myself. I grew up with severe acne on my face and my mum would always ask, ask me, what did you do to yourself? Why is there no space left on your face? Everywhere is so bumpy. I can't even feel the smooth spot. And those kind of phrases, even though I wasn't mad at her at the time, but it actually became a built up resentment within me that the next time I'm starting to gain weight or I'm starting to fall out of my habits, I would start to blame myself and have no compassion for the inner child within me that just really wants to heal and be happy. So the best thing about self introspection is that the more you learn that everything is connected to everything, you are not resentful for no reason. There is always some sort of underlying trauma from your past that you have to make peace with. And the more you're not embarrassed or ashamed to admit that, yeah, I was traumatized by the time that I was told that I was so ugly for not having a space on my face when you rub it. I was really hurt when I was told that nobody wanted to hire me and I was pretty much useless and lazy for staying in my bedroom all day long. And actually the other time that really hurt me was when I used to spend six hours reading books at Dimmix in town hall. And I was told by this mentor that, but you're not meant making money. What is reading going to do for your life? You're supposed to go out there and make money. All these continual cycle of feeling belittled and feeling like, why can't you just appreciate me for my inherent worth? Just kept making me beat myself up when I can't achieve my goals. Having more compassion towards myself means having better inner conversations when things just don't go right. If I see that something's not meeting my standards, instead of me saying, what the hell is this Patty? Why is this not happening? I would actually reframe the conversation and say, oh yeah, this was actually interesting to learn about. It was interesting that I did my hair this way and it didn't work. It was interesting that I talked this way and it didn't work. Let's try again next time. And the more compassion I was just giving myself for the mistakes I made, the more easier it was for everything to be done on time. The more easier it was for me to live in a relaxed space. And it just felt so liberating to finally stop beating myself up for everything that I couldn't do right. 
three, excessive self-comparison. My mom used to always compare me to these people who were born in generational wealth. And she says to me, you have to behave this way and look this way and take care of yourself this way in order for you to survive in this world. If you are not pretty, you are going to get left behind. If you are not smart, if you are not educated, you're going to get left behind. You have to be like these Thai elites. You have to behave like them. And Jesus Christ, as a kid, because I didn't see many examples of that growing up since we lived in the West of Sydney. It was really hard for me to understand how to embody the energy of the chosen one. Embody the energy of the 1% women who know she's the damn prize. Because every day I'm seeing the same things. Acne on my face. A crappy school environment. People that just talk about the same crap. I wanted to really thrive. But my immediate environment was not helping me thrive. So when I go on Instagram, it's not just about comparing how I look in pictures. It's literally about comparing my social economic status. It's about comparing my life opportunities compared to Thai elites. It's about comparing all these things that at one point even made me feel suicidal. But that was back in my early 20s and I'm no longer there anymore. So that's not really relevant. What I'm trying to say is that as an overachiever, we have an expectation that we are the doer. We can get done. I can get my workout done. I can lose the weight. I can go into my 40 laps. I can do anything. But the day my body is too exhausted, we would actually have these internal dialogues like, why the hell are you not performing? So being able to come to terms with this trauma made such a big difference in my life. I started to really go easy on myself with this self-concept of I'm in a family dynamic where I have to be perfect. I'm in a family dynamic where I can't afford to fail. And the more I was going easy on myself with this, the more my habits solidified. Everything is about you assigning your meaning to your life. If you want to assign (coughs) meanings to your life by seeing everything as, oh, I'm not doing enough yet. It's not enough yet. Then you'll keep perpetuating those experiences. Just being really able to slow down and be like, even if you gain weight, even if you don't eat clean, even if you don't work out, I know that your core discipline is strong enough for you to get back to where you need to be. So don't stress yourself out and just chill. You are doing enough now. You are being enough now. Everything is okay. Battle four, overloading pressure. Now, if you're in this world where you're constantly striving to be at your best self, you would know what it feels like to live with pressure every single day. Although today, my parents don't pressure me anymore and my dad has never really pressured me at all, but I always felt pressure to achieve my highest potential. And I don't know where this pressure is coming from. But when I see people not taking initiative to do something about their life, I despise that so much that I would never want to see myself in that same position. And that again links back from the trauma in my childhood that I had to be pretty, I had to be smart, I had to be competent, I needed to graduate from a certain university, I needed to have accolades in order for me to not be left behind by society. And if you really take a step back, these are all facts. The prettier you are, the easier opportunities come to you. And I'm really grateful to have gone through that. But I guess the way I process all those trauma is not in a way where it heals me, but it keeps pressuring me to keep reaching unattainable standards. In my early 20s, I saw my family friend earning four figures from an Instagram post. All she needed to do was take a picture of that product and she would get paid thousands of dollars. And that made me ask myself, what the hell am I doing here at a call center? Why am I not earning four figures with an Instagram post like she was? And that one question that I kept pondering about really transformed the trajectory of my life. It's interesting because she recently contacted me and it's like if we were to meet again she would not judge me in any way shape or form for who I am or where I am today she's never been judgmental of me but I don't know why I kept feeling so judgmental of myself so I would pressure myself to meet all these criteria that in order for you to have this kind of opportunity you must be attractive you must be physically alluring you must be magnetic your personality has to be this way everything has to be this way so every day just felt like an overloading pressure every day just felt like I have to be better and better and better. And what makes things quite hard is that during the times I lived in Bondi, it's like the environment pressured me to build abs. I had to have a four pack. I had to be hot and I don't know why, but I just felt like if I became shredded and strong, then it's going to open me to more career opportunities and success. But the minute I stepped myself out of that environment where building abs, working out and being healthy was a normal thing, it was 10 times harder for me to try and build the abs and lose the weight. So if you're feeling pressured from being really, really behind, I want you to know that your environment plays a big factor. And if you are surrounded in a shitty environment, you must forgive yourself for not being able to rise as fast as somebody else who is immersed in a better environment. Your outer facilities, who you surround yourself with, who your friend groups are, and what information you're fed each day really affects your progress rate. And if you're not moving as fast as you think you should, then don't always blame yourself that it's your fault. But also at the same time, don't blame the environment completely, but just have the awareness that it's okay. It's okay that you are where you are because you're doing your best for where you are. So the 
minute I was able to really accept myself that despite the fact that you were destroyed so many times, you still rose above your environment and be who you were today. I'm so proud of you. That's how I literally want you to talk to yourself as much as positive pressure is good for you. But a lot of times pressure is useless and the more you can just let go and be at ease with where you are today, the easier things will get for you. Battle five, constant negative inner dialogue. Now the reason why negative inner dialogues are so prominent for overachievers like ourselves is because we just want results, man. For me personally, ever since publishing videos on this YouTube channel, the less patience I had to tolerate anybody else's drama because all we want to see is results. And sometimes when our 3D reflection is not showing exactly what we are embodying, it's really easy for us to interpret everything as everything is everything is unfair, the world sucks, all these people are losers, why are they projecting all this shitness onto me, get away from me. And I found myself having a lot of these inner self-talk, especially while I was doing the beach clips. And the reason why these negative inner dialogues come up is because we have such a high expectations of who we would become, but a lot of times people around us can't actually catch up to where we are, or they just have different priorities. And the minute we observe that somebody is not meeting our standards, we start to blame and feel victimized that why is this person not supporting me? Why is this person not doing their job properly? But I've found that the easiest way to really calm this negative inner dialogue is to actually not assign any meaning to what I see. So let's just say the next time I see somebody wallowing about their shortcomings, they got scammed hundreds and thousands of dollars, they randomly caught COVID, then their daughter's not meeting their expectation, and then this person is disappointing them, and then they're saying to me, Patty, could you please help me build my business? And my negative inner dialogue is already thinking to myself, how are we going to build a business when you have this much baggage? And I'm so pissed off that despite you having baggage, you have the audacity to ask me to help you build a business by not paying me. What kind of stupidity is this? Now, if I were to be my current self going back in time, I would actually be aware that I cannot manifest these weird experiences if I in some way wasn't cultivating the bad energy. And in order for me to tone down the bad energy, I have to observe what my thought patterns and what my inner dialogues are. So I would be aware that, oh, actually, I say these really mean things inside. I don't say it to them, but I think these thoughts on repeat. So instead of me judging the situation as, what stupidity is this? I deserve so much more than to help people out for free. I would just say to myself, that's just their world and they can do whatever they want. They can do whatever they want in their reality, but this doesn't apply to my reality. I am now choosing to raise my vibration. I am choosing to walk on a parallel reality so they can still do whatever they want, but it's not going to bother me. Even if they want to do it at me, it's still not going to bother me because I'm shutting the door to this vibrational engagement. I'm not going to engage vibrationally with them anymore more by feeling victimized, by feeling resentful, by feeling angry. But I'm going to proactively respond by not giving a fudge. And the minute that I just kept shifting and shifting into this new identity, the less these negative inner dialogues were affecting me. I was no longer having thoughts like, why can't people just appreciate my inherent worth? I just made it a habit to stop talking like that and instead say things to myself like, you know what, Patty, I'm so proud of yourself for shutting that door. So I'm not even trying to fix the situation. I'm just shifting my awareness to what I'm doing right. And these negative inner dialogues over time just dissipates and it no longer hinders me to engage in a reality that I don't want to be in. And this could happen for you as well. Battle six, exerting too much masculine force. Now the reason why I don't recommend any women to be in their masculine mode often is because it's counterintuitive. We are not designed to always go and hunt, to always get things done and to always take action, but we are designed to receive. We are here to embody a relaxed and feminine, calm energy where we do take aligned action. We we do take inspired action but after that we let go and we allow the results to come to us and this was something that I just couldn't experientially understand because the way we grew up was all about taking masculine action and the funny thing is we only understand that if we want to earn money this way we have to sell this like this and the act of selling is taking action but there was actually no awareness of if I really want to receive money I actually have to raise my vibration to then take inspired action and what's interesting Thing is that even though I believe that we can manifest money, but I used to get really skeptical of these coaches saying that you can literally manifest money by doing nothing. Although I tried to believe it, but inherently I was just thinking, what load of bullshit is this? You already have the resources. You already look pretty. You are already living in a first world country talking about how to manifest money. And because these thought patterns continue to be so dominant within my system, I would then always be inclined to go back and take really masculine action. When I walked throughout the day, I would 
would walk with a very fast pace because that's all I know of. All I see in people around me is that the faster they walk, the more successful they become. It's like they attribute the act of rushing and hustling and walking fast to I'm going to accumulate more results. But I've never really seen people actually take their time to walk at a slow pace, to really breathe properly, to really just chew and relax and the things do actually come to them. I've never personally experienced this because I didn't fully believe in it. So therefore, as a high achiever, we only attribute success with I've got to put in the work, which yes, I completely agree. But there's also the part of letting go when the work is finished. And that's why it's emphasized in the book Tao Te Ching. Once the work is done, don't do it anymore. Leave it as it is. And I guess my turning point to really rest in my feminine energy was when I got sick on December of 2023. I just didn't have energy to do anything anymore. And I found that the more I was allowing myself to heal without criticizing myself, the more enjoyable the experience become. I start to enjoy being still. I start to enjoy the sense of, oh, actually, it's okay okay that I didn't edit this clip. It's okay if I don't post this on time. It's literally okay if I don't film any more footages. I've done enough. You are enough. You are allowed to rest now. And the better this feeling feels, the more I'm motivated to take more inspired action. And it's such a different feeling than I have to put in the hard work in order to achieve a result from a masculine force, from this place of there's never enough. There's never enough time. There's never enough resources. There's never enough money for me to feel enough. And I'm just so happy to find be out of that place where actually I'm choosing to feel enough. I know that I don't have every material thing that I want, but today it feels enough. I'm feeling okay to lie down. It's fine. I'm just going to chill. And so as a high achiever, if you're able to come to this chilled place, I really applaud you for it because it takes dedication. It takes persistence in building a new soft concept for you to finally realize that you have to be the change before the change embodies itself in your reality. Battle seven, arrogance and pride. Now, arrogance and pride was something that hindered me for a very, very long time. And the reason why this was so interesting is because I would always feel bitter towards people that actually have access to therapists or some sort of better facilities to heal them and they still dwell about their problems. During the times I really needed a therapist when I was 18 years old, I was having clinical depression and I really needed somebody to support me through the stress. I was literally told, don't spend money on these kind of things. Come on, Patty, you're not really depressed, you're overthinking it. So if you really need a therapist, we'll get you the free one where you can claim on your health Medicare and we'll just go to your local therapist around the area. And I remember sitting down at the clinic that day and she was literally prioritizing this person for an hour and a half before me because this person was literally losing their homes or something like that. But for myself, I just felt depressed about a breakup with a guy and just feeling lost in life after doing my HSC. And she saw this as a very minuscule problem. So therefore, it felt like everything that I felt wasn't valid and I just never spent money on a proper psychologist or a healer until I was in my later 20s. And that made me feel really resentful every time I come across somebody where they're spending thousands of dollars on therapists and they're still saying to me, I'm depressed. But instead of blaming the person and saying that you are the person that's choosing to be the victim, I try to reframe the situation and say, that's just your traumatized self speaking from arrogance and pride. Because I was able to get through that period from my own resilience, I start to feel like I am better than everybody else. I start to feel like, why can't you just get over it? Why can't you just motivate yourself to go to the gym? It's not that hard. I've done it myself. I live two hours away from the ocean water by public transport and I still get to the ocean water by 6 30 a.m leaving the house at 3 40 a.m and I realized that all of these thoughts were so they were so judgmental because I was filled with arrogance and pride and this was something that I recognized recently that you need to heal this part of you patty because it may be valid that you are more skilled than a lot of people now but it doesn't mean that you are better than somebody else because you think you are better than somebody else. To finally set myself free from this dynamic was true liberation. To stop projecting my insecurities by thinking that I'm better than everybody else is something that actually really accelerated my YouTube growth. The more I was able to heal my pride, the more things start to flourish in my life. Suddenly, it doesn't take much effort to lose weight. Suddenly, it doesn't take much effort to stay consistent because my energy is now calm and neutral. And being naturally disciplined anyway, that's the core of who I am. So I truly recommend you to forgive the part of you that is prideful but at the same time recognize that anytime you have judgmental thoughts of silently putting other people down in your own mind that is your trauma coming back up to hinder you from your growth that is your pride speaking healing your own trauma is the most powerful thing you can do so that you finally 
Use that yourself free and only radiate positive, loving energy outwards. Battle eight, impatience with results. Now dealing with impatience has also been the biggest hindrances of my life. The only time where I was really patient with myself was when I was swimming. There was a time where I really enjoyed swimming in ocean water. So in 10 months, I was able to go from not being able to conquer the baby pool to doing about 2000 meters in the adult lane. And the reason why I was able to achieve that goal is because I loved every single part of my growth. I loved conquering my fear of getting washed by the harsh waves. And that's why it happened quite quickly for me. And there was almost never a time where I was in the baby pool and thinking to myself, I want to swim faster than this. I just appreciated my progress because swimming was something that I could never do as a child. And just being able to have that freedom to glide on the water, to see the sunrise in the adult pool, to finally just chill in the water and forget about everything is such a big milestone for me. But for some reason, I just couldn't apply this principle for every single area of my life, especially with YouTube. About a month ago, I was trying really, really hard to improve myself. As much as I would still follow great habits throughout the day, but I would always find myself being inclined to fix my thumbnails, to fix my titles all the way to 2 a.m. And there were many nights where I would spend from 12 a.m. to 5.30 a.m. just literally editing, editing and analyzing, editing and analyzing. And it was absolutely crazy because I didn't get the results that I wanted from investing more energy. In fact, I was getting less views because I was probably energetically fidgeting around so much. So this month, I made it a top priority to say to myself, I am not controlled by the thought of wanting to be viral. I am no longer fearful of seeing a video flop. I am no longer fearful of being my true authentic self on camera. I'm not going to try and be who I think I should be to get more views. And I'm not going to talk about generic topics and script all of my videos just to get more views. None of this was going to happen anymore because I don't want to be impatient anymore. It's a suffering to put myself in this constant mental cage of needing to fit a certain criteria to follow a template to achieve this kind of success that doesn't guarantee my long-term happiness. So that means I'm not going to let metrics watch hours or anything dictate my worth. I'm not gonna let any outside factors control how I make content. I'm gonna focus on being happy with myself, loving who I am every day, then speaking my truth. And the minute I truly came to this realization, suddenly everything just felt a lot better. I feel so much more at ease. I feel like the universe truly has my back now. I'm no longer fighting against this weird force that I felt like everything is out there to get me because nothing is out there to get you. As a high achiever, it's really important for you to slowly let go of the masculine force and really embrace being in your true divine power because you are here to create. You are here to experience joy and happiness. And if other people say you are here to make money and achieve success and survive, that is their world and their reality. But I'm not going to settle for somebody else's reality. Okay guys, so these were every mental battles that I went through as a high achiever. This video was pretty spontaneous and not scripted. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you like my video, please feel free to leave a comment down below to let me know what you wanna see. And also feel free to subscribe to my channel. I'm excited to keep growing on this journey with you and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.